go. Dilkert here and we're going to replace a couple of headers today. The Yes, I'm in my squeaky chair as you can tell. Um, the two most commonly used headers are the .100 and the .156. And when you put them up next to the ruler, the .156, if I remember correctly, has seven pins uh, to an inch and the .100 has ten pins to an inch. Uh, I'm starting to see a lot of headers coming in like this one where somebody tried to replace it and they did a really crappy job and ended up soldering directly to a pin. This header they didn't even try to replace and this last pin is burnt which is very common on Williams power supplies. The next wonderful thing that I'm seeing a lot of is this kind of crap. Um, this, uh, I don't even know what to say about this header. It's, uh, it's just craptastic. And this header is very common because the insulation displacement connectors, when they start to lose their connection, they uh, draw some more amperage, and of course they burn up. And well, then then you have people soldering wires directly to the header, and um, it's uh, just wonderful and it's special. I don't know what's so hard about replacing a header, so um, we're going to show you what it's all about and how, uh, how easy it really is. Now, I'm, I'm a tool whore just like anybody else and I love me some tools. But, um, you know, not everybody has all the gazillions of dollars to buy all these fancy uh, desoldering machines and all that kind of crap. So, I go with this wonderful cheapy Radio Shack POS right here and this thing is awesome it does a wonderful job and we'll show you how quick and easy it is and, uh, and then we'll go from there so the first thing is we're not going to do this connector um, but we'll save that for another time for properly pinning connectors a lot of times what people will do is they'll, they'll buy Bob Roberts kit of connectors for Williams power supplies or Williams boards and they'll only change the connector. If you only change the connector and do not change out the headers you'll get anywhere from three to six months before the connector itself will be burnt again just like this one is burnt up here and that's that's even with a Molex uh, connector and not an insulation displacement connector. Three, six months at the outside if you don't play your game a lot you'll, you'll get about six months on average you're going to get three months before it's, it's trash again and then your connections bad your voltage are off. What we're going to do is we're going to start with this one this little guy right here and we're going to try and shoot this through my my wonderful magnifying lamp um, and then you can you can see everything that's uh, how I see it I hope and uh, This one. I gotta look to the side. I can't see. Okay. Now, if you squeeze your little, you squeeze a little ball, just set it on there. Give it a few seconds. Let it suck the solder right off. The cool thing about this is that in most cases. This heats evenly enough that, like I say, in most cases, it will not take off the trace or lift the pad. That's the cool thing about it. The other cool thing about it is when you're done and you have the header out, it doesn't leave any solder in the hole, and the new header just slits, slides right in there. The reason we're doing this short little one is simply for time purposes. We don't want to take a whole bunch of time. The only disadvantage of this Radio Shack desoldering tool is that it uh, it doesn't come with a stand. And since it doesn't come with a stand, I have to find something to put it on. Well, I've got these little portable ashtray to put it on, and it works pretty good. Now, once you've once you've desoldered the header, you just wiggle it a little bit, and it'll come right out of there. 
and make sure you get on the pins okay there it is it's all intact and if you look closely the holes are nice and clean we'll flip it over the other side holes on the back side are real nice and clean all the pads and traces are intact now what we're going to do is we're going to take this little guy here and Bob Roberts sells these they're 24 positions I think he gets a buck a piece for them, and you snap them to what you need. This one is a uh, seven position, and so we just count it off to seven. I got to move it away from the magnifier so I can see it. But two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and you just snap it like so, and it's done. Well, it, it is a keyed. Oops. Oh crap, I'll get that later. Um, it is keyed, and it's keyed in position number three. Just take you in those pliers, and you pop out pin number three, and it's all ready to go. It's keyed. You don't want to cut these pins off. If you cut the pins off, what happens is when the, the key for the uh, connector uh, hits on them, and then they sit high on the pins. If you pull the pin out, it'll actually sit closer down to the board. Give you a real nice fit. Now when you go to put these in, to get them in, you're probably going to have to wiggle them a little bit. Um, and they... Sorry, I got my hands in the way, but that's the way this, this works. These pins are a little bit bigger than the originals. And they fit so much nicer give you so much better connection but the header is now in there and ready to be soldered in place all pins are stick up where they need to be and uh, that's pretty much all there is to it uh, since, uh, since this went so quick what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and solder this bad boy in place should only take a couple of minutes and the one key thing that you want is you, you really don't care about the keyhole the keyhole doesn't get any solder the rest of the holes, you want to make sure that there is no gap in there when you're done soldering. So in other words, don't be stingy with the solder. And don't, don't be afraid to put the heat on there. And let's see. I need something to hold that up a little bit so that it doesn't fall on us. We'll just use this other board. And let's see. Um, Once again, I'm using another cheapo tool, and uh, I like to use the layman tools. You know, I'd like to buy the the nice stuff. I can afford to buy the nice stuff, but I want to use something that everybody can use. And that way, when you say, "Hey, go ahead and use that," everybody goes, "Oh, okay." And they don't have to say, "Well, I don't have that big fancy thing that you got." Or I can't do it because I don't have the big fancy thing you got. Uh, this this takes away the excuses. It's quick. It's painless. And if I drop it or break it, then I just throw it away and buy another one. Or if I abuse it, you know, who cares? Now let me look in here and make sure that I've got a good... Yeah, it's done. It's all good. So, this is replacing burnt headers. These just happen to be a couple of Williams Power Supplies that somebody sent me. I don't know who. They could belong to just about anybody. Uh, but I've replaced tons of headers uh, this past week. Um, this particular header here is on a Williams, or excuse me, a Bally Sound Plus that's going into my Xenon, these two headers. They were both uh, toasty. And uh, I've done some this week on uh, some Bally displays. And I've just been doing a lot of headers this week. So I thought, what better time to uh, do a little video for replacing burnt headers. And uh, once again, I appreciate my daughter Laura not making her uh, smart-ass comments and helping me film this and uh, 
that's about all I have for this uh, video.